Hello and welcome to the Yawning Portal Tavern. If your aim is to head into the Yawning Portal itself, that is just as well. I simply ask that you pay your tab in advance. It's very good to see you all, and I see we have a few new faces today. Please come in, have a seat, grab a drink, and be ready to listen or tell a tale or two. Okay. Hello, hello, yes, we are back. All I need to do is hide this one because there are only four of us at the moment. Welcome back. Yes, it is, uh, it is time to continue the game. Em is, is gonna go ahead and take a nap. We're gonna do a quick scene and then we're going to move on into our talk back session. So please stick around if you have any questions for any of us, such as why did I shave myself in, or shave my face into mutton chops for a 10 minute scene? Um, I will, we will answer those at, at the very, very end. So, hold on, hold on, one more time. Other, other, other side, there we go. <laughs> it's a, it's a pretty good... <laughs> This is, this is the product of me growing out my facial hair for like three weeks because it takes me so, so long to get that done. So, let's go ahead. Um, you, so you make your way to the Awning Portal Tavern. tavern. Yeah, let me go ahead. I'm gonna share really quick um, with everybody a quick picture of the yawning portal. So here is the inn um, that we're looking at from the outside. From the outside, it looks like a pretty standard three-story, not very much interesting going on here, tavern. But of course, the yawning portal is not named that lightly. The yawning portal is named that because there is in the floor of the first floor of this, uh, of this tavern, a direct line down to the Undermountain, which is a just absurdly large and complicated dungeon that is that spans all of underground Waterdeep. Um, that is not our destination today. Nor we could we could run Dungeon of the Mad Mage. It's it's a thing we could theoretically do, but not this day. Um, and here is another picture of the inside of, of the tavern, populated with a bunch of well-known uh, NPCs from fiction. I want you to kind of be able to see what it is that we're looking at here. Yes, and, and I, will, I will challenge folks to name, not right now, but name as many of these uh, numbered NPCs as they possibly can, but this is, this is the idea, the bar, is on the first floor. You can see Dernan right there pouring drinks. Um, one of those is him, I'm sure. And then there's, yeah, yeah, the, number 55. Um, and then of course there are there is a second and a third floor, both of which overlook the portal itself. And in fact, sort of a pastime here in Waterdeep is to just sit by and just sort of gaze down into the into the portal. Um, this is a very exciting place. It's not exactly a dive bar, but it is known every now and then that uh, activity happens uh, around the, the upper reaches of Undermountain. So it's, it's also not necessarily the safest place to, to enjoy a drink, which is why it tends to cater to the most powerful and, and influential adventurers um, and also those who would like to see themselves as powerful and, uh, and, and affluent adventurers. So it is, it is packed to the gills in here. It's, it's very, very crowded. Um, you get in, you don't know, you weren't given instructions as to what to do once you got here. Um, so, but yes, Echo, you know that the first floor has a, a room in the back that uh, that can be used for a private conversation, and you know that Barnabas has been actually renting out a room here in the tavern, so you can get a message to him pretty easily by, for example, approaching the barkeep. What do you all do? 
Echo's going to warn Kretha not to jump in. Not this to hole. jump in the portal. Kretha's still on Stinky, by the way. So this is probably a little bit more of a squish than usual. Stinky. Well, weirdly, this is like the one place where no one would look at you twice. For yeah. This. Yes. Stinky is admitted yeah. in um, being a medium-sized creature. Um, any any large or larger creatures would unfortunately have to wait outside. But uh, yes, Stinky just manages to to get in. But uh, yeah, let me check if uh, if. Barney's made his way back since I left this morning, and I'm going to elbow my way towards the bar and talk to Durin and be like, hey, bold shoulder, come back yet? So let's let's talk a little bit about Durin himself. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up an image, even though I probably don't have to. Um, <laughs> but that stunning visage. Let's see here. NPCs. Durnan, Durnan, D-U-R-N-A-N. I am sharing his image right now. <laughs> Ex-adventurer, current bar owner. Yes, and Living. and well known for being like like a top tier adventurer, uh, the kind of person who spent a fair amount of time just wandering around killing monsters for no discernible reason. So I, you know, I as, turn this as way. And, you know, as per tradition. So you approach, and of course, Echo, you've been in the, 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 the tavern for a while, so you and Dernan have probably gotten on well, probably exchanged quite a few stories. He has stories that you're pretty sure aren't true, but you le le legitimately cannot tell which of his stories are true and which of them are not true because they are equally fantastical. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter to echo whether no. or not they're true no you're a performer you know you know what it what a good story is worth so you approach the bar you say uh is barnabas still here and Dernan says yes yes uh barnabas is is up in his room is everything okay who's who are these folks you brought in uh well that's a good <laughs> i know one of them as i as elko spins on a dime and, sa and says in goblin real quick hey shit i forgot to get your name what's your name <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, my name is Kletha, and he's Stinky. This is Kletha and Stinky, and, uh, Calder. Uh, oh, fuck. Aren't you, like, just in common turns around. Aren't you, like, a fucking noble or something? What's your family name again? <laughs> I am, Cal I am Calder, uh, Calder Kletha of House Cheval. I'm all holding the secret room. You are known here, Calder of House Cheval, and I appreciate your presence. Welcome to the Yawning Portal. Uh, <laughs> Calder will... will uh, we'll make a light, non-committal gr grunt at that. <laughs> I will give each of you a free flag and a veil if you promise not to talk about the weather. Deal? I Why would I ever talk about the weather? You would be surprised how often it comes up. I will not talk about the weather. You have my promise. Uh, yeah, as soon as he hands over the, the you know, the tankards, Echo will take his slide some coins on a thing and says, it's lovely outside, and, like, run up. <laughs> <laughs> like, he pays for it as he's talking about the weather. If you would be so kind, you're here to see um, a certain well-known dwarf whose name we shouldn't be speaking particularly loudly at this time, yes? I have no idea who, what you're talking about, but yes. Indeed. There is a private room here on the first floor in the back, I can arrange for you to have a little bit of privacy. You uh, have very, very powerful friends. I hope you all know that. The dwarf in question comes, is someone to whom I owe a couple I, of favors. I'm sure you are well aware that that comes with this territory. Indeed. Echo waves uh, from like. Well, I'll flip a gold coin to get uh, a gold coin to him uh, as a just as a tip. He catches it between two fingers, makes it disappear into a pouch. Yep, just, we'll move on. I'll mark it off my sheet. <laughs> it is a fascinating idea for a tavern, I must tell you. It's absolutely fascinating. By the way, the people they keep calling me something I I cannot quite translate from common. What is a tourist? <laughs> <laughs> One who practices touring. Yes, someone who comes here as a visitor for a very short amount of time. And some of the merchants believe they can take advantage of those who, who don't know their way around the city. 
How has Waterdeep been treating you all since you came here? I do hope you find the City of Splendors to be splendorous. Oh, we made it with a we made a bee wing, a, a bee line for the white wing, so we so far quite well. Ah, the yes. Food from the from the carts is very good. Oh yes, it. Uh, it it's a less pleasant experience later, but it is very tasty. Let's make this grid invisible. It's a little bit irritating at the goblin. moment. goblin. That's not going to be a problem for her. <laughs> yeah, but it is for but it is for Calder with his refined palate. <laughs> So, do you oh, see sensitive system? Do you see yeah, but the? Go, yeah, but you're gonna you're gonna love the bre- you're gonna love it when I introduce you to the concept of breakfast pastry. Do you see the the, the room up north uh, in this on this map that has a a large table and you know sort of a closed off area? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That is where uh, Dernan nods you to, and says. Somewhat sarcastically, his majesty will be with you presently. Echo's already, like, in the doorway. <laughs> totally. Great has totally forgotten that we're supposed to be meeting a king. <laughs> what do they mean by his majesty? He is, don't worry about, don't worry about that. That'll come, you'll, you'll understand in a moment. So you enter, you sit, let's go ahead and get some. I was gonna say, is, is let's go ahead Barnabas and get some folks in here. Room? No, when you when you enter, Barnabas is is not there just yet. There's car. There's it makes Krita. me nervous that we're actually putting our stuff down because that feels like it's gonna. It's be a for battle. the audience. <laughs> it's for the audience. There's no way whatsoever that I would ever, 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 ever. Um, spring a combat encounter on you at the Yawning Portal Tavern, which has a portal to a horrible dungeon full of powerful monsters underneath it that people come to observe for entertainment. No way. But but hilariously, the monsters that emerge out of the Yawning Portal uh, quickly learn that, oh, I'm sticking my head into the largest singular collection of adventurers in in one place in all of Faerun. Depends. So. They may first see a bunch of people and think, ooh, a buffet. <laughs> and then they learn that, like, oh, level five level five and six magics. From yeah. 30 people. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I saw that map. I saw Durst is in there. <laughs> Durst was in there. Gwenevar was in there. Xanathar uh, itself was, and, was in that Nih- picture. Xanathar and Nihilor. <laughs> Uh, I also, I also, I also saw Minsk and Boo. <laughs> I peeked between that Matt Mercer. Yeah. So, uh, a, do I get a token? I'm sorry. Do I oh get a yeah, token? that's right. You're here now, aren't you? Um. So a server comes in, asks for your order, and uh, uh, is anybody is anybody ordering anything? Calder will, yes! will, will, Calder will order. Gla- will order a glass of fine wine. Create as a bottomless uh, pick. He'll ask, for a, appetizers. he'll ask for a very specific bottle that he knows they will have. Absolutely. No problem. Um, they they bring you some some appetizers as well, some some nice food. It's it's not like it's not quite greasy spoon level, like there are people of means that come here or that come here, but this is not the white wing. This is this is definitely a place where you're you're looking to get like like relatively Krita's inexpective kind of food, food, yeah. or inexpensive food. Yeah. Are you on the table? Yeah, Echo, okay. I'm on a chair and then sits cross-legged on the table. Awesome. Drinking out of the, the tankard. Uh, Calder will like will sit at the table and just slow, smile at him and I go, I have missed you. So <laughs> how did you tell me? Uh, run, uh, was, he was running away from, tied up in, in giant spider webs from giant spiders. Sorry, oh. I can't call right now. Walking in the spider. Sorry. See, that's quite <laughs> funny because we met, and I gesture to, uh. to Calder, when he was just finishing up a terrible battle, and I was stuck in by myself in a room. Is this just a goblin thing, you think? Because I feel like it's a goblin well, thing. I don't know. Were you put into that room by your... Um bloodthirsty fucking brother who uh the first time of seeing you for 10 years was like hey i'm gonna kill you but i'm gonna kill you via giant spider no no because to be fair 
Two shitty, two shitty siblings. <laughs> well, tap I do have some of those, but uh, I I don't think that they would have been in 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 that place. No, no. No, no. It's a fine. It, the uh, Sun of the Citadel is a fine place. Drink. It's really fucking terrible. Speaking of which, where's Mevo? Back at the Sun. Actually, Mevo. Uh, we last saw him a few weeks ago. He departed company to return to the Sun of the Citadel. Why? He needed to, to tell you would be, people about the... You would be so proud. And with uh, that, I we'll, regale, we'll be regaling uh, uh, Echo with like, with like, and then no shit, <laughs> cut it in half. He is very impressive. I was very impressed. And with uh, that, um, the, the doorway is, is uh, the door opens and is darkened by a a four foot tall, very stout so like um, dwarf darkened. wearing an un, unusual lack of armor. Um, instead, in in kind of almost like a miner's outfit, um, you know, sturdy sturdy trousers, uh, a a shirt, and a very very um, like a stout vest that's that's made to to keep sparks off you when you're working with hot metal, that sort of thing, mm. and. He he walks in and he looks he looks at everybody and he looks at Calder specifically since you're the 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 one real OG that uh, that's here and the frogs he, with them yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, looks at frog <laughs> and embarrassingly he drops to a knee. And says, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. Can you shut the door, please? He stands. Actually, he, Echo holds out a hand and thaumaturgies the door closed. He's not in the room yet. So he'll, <laughs> he will walk <laughs> forward and then the door will close behind him. Yes. I'll smack him in the ass with it. It's fine. <laughs> look over at, look over at, uh, at Echo. That was new. It is. But you should probably, like... We'll get to that. Echo gestures at very sorrowful-looking Barnabas. Uh, Calder will reach into his pack, uh, pull out the wasted melted sword, and just sort of toss it onto the table. Proof that the forge exists. He looks at it. He says, What hands forged this? A A dwarger. He takes a, a step back like he smelled something bad. And then he kind of looks at it again. It's clearly the first of, I'm going to guess, several hundred tries. But it has something in it. He looks at it again. And he says, Yes. I see. Well, as much as I dislike the Dwerger permanently. Or not permanently. Personally is the word I meant to say. Mm-hmm. Their work isn't terrible, and it does take time to learn the Forge's secrets, I have been told. I wouldn't know myself. Well, funny but this you say that. has a feeling to it. It does. Well, fortunately, you're going to have ample opportunity to discuss it with an expert. Hmm? Uh, Krita, this is the individual that we were to deliver it to. Oh, yes! Oh, yes, yes! Hold on just one sec. And she kind of reaches and pulls out. So, um, where to to give this to you? Give me just one second. Oh, yes. Hey. <laughs> just letting you know. And Down, I'm speaking in fin- Dwarven the whole finishes time. Finishes the glass. <laughs> just, just letting you know that you are here. And I am giving you to someone who will truly appreciate your greatness, all right? I truly appreciate you not being a racist shithead on the way. Thank you. Echo, and she like, says that entirely in Dwarven and then hands. Thank you, Arendil. I appreciate you carrying my burden. I Stand won't up. say always, but definitely, yes. Uh, here, Here is some... Um, is Here it... is someone for you. <laughs> like you're handing over a phone. <laughs> oh. So like, uh, so yeah. this <laughs> is far and away the treasure 
that you will that you've sought for this place. This is the. I'm still trying to get over the fact that he basically listened to her call him a racist shithead in Norvin. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I know heard that and spit a bit of the ale up. So, um, yeah, he... The only uh, one who doesn't know is Calder. He kind, of, he kind of knits his brows and gives you a kind of confused look, holds out his hand, and the moment the... Um, the moment the, the, his hand closes over the hilt, A... It turns into a stout battle axe, and B, like, for a moment, his 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 eyes roll back, and and it's it's almost like it's almost like you can tell that hours of conversation. It's a matrix download moment. are are happening in just a moment. Yes, and his eyes open, and he says, "I know kung fu." No. <laughs> No, his, his his eyes open, and he says, I see. I know where the forge is. I know how it fell, and I know what it does. Cool. You're then, you're going, then, I, am, then I am sure you're going to uh, agree that that is worth more than the initial sum agreed upon, so you will acquiesce to payment and then some. <laughs> this is beyond anything I could have possibly imagined. There is no sum of gold I can give you that will, that will make, that will be worth this. But yes. I will accept a boon. But yes. Yes. Good. This is, this is a piece of dwarven history that was, (laughs) it was lost forever. Durgadon himself. I cannot express the gift you have given. It's not the gift that I'm... Your gratitude for the gift that I care about. Because we lost someone very important. Yes. And I think that we all owe him a very important debt. I agree. And that is the reason why we are here. And thank you for bringing us to the point. I believe that there is an item in this city that can facilitate Clarion's return. I've gone to some lengths to dig up some information, but my contacts here in Waterdeep are somewhat limited, I'm afraid. Dernan here has helped me a great deal. Not here. Dernan has helped me a great deal. But in order to find out if this item exists and how we are to obtain it, well, I needed your help. That, it's a, it is a dwarven treasure. It belongs in the hands of a dwarven king. Plus he's kind of a racist shithead, so. What do you mean by that? Stop, (laughs) I'll say stop. He promised he would stop. And I've he... never known I've never known a dwarven noble to ever go back on his word. I know. I'm just saying he has some different values in them. He did not expect to be indebted to a goblin, nor did he expect to uh be called out on his prejudices towards the Dwarger. He to be vowed... fair, that was Charlotte doing that. She he is still us. regardless, he has promised to uh, not allow those preconceived biases affect him, I will expect that you will hold him to those same promises. Barks. Oh, I thought. I'm just saying it's much easier if he's in hands of King. Exactly. If you're saying he, the weapon? The weapon is sentient. It contains the spirit of a Dwarven King. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Hi, he keeps it says in common. Wrong name, so that's weird. Yeah, it, it, can... it, it speaks in common. <laughs> Greetings. That's new. You learned common. Like, oh, fuck. <laughs> having been Story connected, ever having been connected to you for some time, yes, I, I believe I have figured out the common, the, modern, the more modern interpretations. What's the word? Um, um, he says a couple of words in tongue. The common tongue. Yes. The thing in the mouth. Did you learn goblin too? No. Oh, that's weird. Because okay. I that's know fine. I think in goblin. 
It's okay. That's so weird. It's not required. It's okay. He promised not to be a racist shitbag. That doesn't require no, I'm him. Not putting, I'm not saying that. I am very fascinated now. So now he can speak out loud to everyone. That is... That will be useful and will make it easier to, to, to distinguish between which monarch we're speaking to. Very helpful that we no longer have to just touch it. Um, so there's a ghost in the dagger axe. Yes. Don't be surprised. Ghosts are apparently lots more common than you think. Oh, no. I, the actually, stories of Durgadon say that he put his soul into every piece that he made. It just happens to be a little bit more literal now. Especially that one. If perhaps this is the weapon he wielded when he died, it would not surprise me, especially if he's the one who forged it, that his well, we spirit it. may have transferred into the item. It is a thing that happens on occasion in Dwarven legend. But to well, see one myself... It. We did find well, it in the dragon's not... hoard, so... Uh, yes. We, we actually like buried his, uh, his right yeah, another one. man next to him, and it was a very nice, very... Thing. That brings, yeah, uh, you're, by the way, there's a dragon, uh, by the way, the forge is intact, uh, was inhabited by Durger, we did kill a lot of them, no idea, the entire mountain surrounded by orcs, I'm sure you, I'm sure you know, and uh, there's a black dragon that lives in the basement, it is not terribly hospitable. Hmm. No. No. Well, perhaps our two she problems will take care of them, take hand. care of each other. <laughs> I, uh, best case scenario, the uh, the dragon break, uh, decides it doesn't like orcs in its backyard and kills a bunch of them, or uh, worst case scenario, orcs manage to capture and enslave a black dragon, but in, according to my knowledge of history, that has never gone well for anyone who's tried. How big is this dragon? Mm, like not f not f bigger than Calcric, smaller than a, smaller than a great worm. So I'm unlikely like, an adult. Uh, if, if, it, if it's an adult, it's a young one. Very well. Nothing, so, not an not an easy fight, but would be, but we, but given the fact that we met it at the end of that of that hellscape of a dungeon, it was still, uh, it was not something we wished to fight, so we talked our way past it. I intend to secure the forge, but it will take some days for my army to reach the stone again, tooth. If perhaps we will eventually be able to come up with a plan to allow again our problems to the problems to deal with each other. It is worrisome that the orcs have have such head start. They've they were clearly on the march long before we took the mission. Oh, certainly, because they were not there when I went through that door originally. They, they, there was not. I I did not see single orc. And single yet they were. Orc. They were there when we arrived, but we snuck past them. They were clearly, and so they they've only been recently there. I see. I don't know. I heard story. You did not exactly sneak past the orc. <laughs> we, we snuck past them initially. The fact that that changed afterwards is immaterial. <laughs> so you say we. Is it just you three in Waterdeep? What happened to everyone else? Just Clarion died, right? Not anyone else? No one else, no, fortunately. There was... Lauren, uh, I met, I met Lore, and Hyacinth's partner. Not a fan. <laughs> oh yeah, I met her at the wedding. They yeah. did not get to She is not she's intense. She's so intense. Clarion, I do not know him, but his death affected everything and um it was very broken at, even from the moment I met everyone. It was very broken. Um so I would say uh, Lord went home to to take Clarion to his rest and to be with son and 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 spouse in that time of of of, of deep deep sorrow and pretty, pretty foot is fine and 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 Charlotte went with too and um, I really do think it's for best they were not in best minds. Um, I think that having a, perhaps not being as much part of it uh, may have more clear mind. Calder does just grieves different. Um, so he here. No, I, my, motive, my motive grieving in this case is stubborn defiance at the, at the harsh reality. 
I admit, I was expecting more folks here. For what I have in mind, we're going to want more than just the four of us. What? What do you think? What are you thinking? So, and he turns to Calder specifically. What do you know of the Xanathar? Uh... I can I I have an idea of what it should be if that's okay if you don't mind me like because I know the lore quite well so I can work with the middle ground. Yes, either the organization or the individual. What what do you know no. of of the Xanathar? Mostly reputation. He's uh, some sort of he's a monster, a beholder, I think, and a oh and uh, yes, extraordinarily powerful and aggressively insane. Paranoid. Yes, insane. To be seen. What are we getting into? The Xanathar I mean, I... is is the name of a criminal syndicate here in Waterdeep. Are you kidding? I'm aware of it. I'm aware of it. They are less a guild of petty thieves or extortionists, and more a guild of those who pull the levers of power, as well as those who trade in magic. Are they the ones that? Unionized? No. I read in paper. That was that was one of the offshoot thieves guilds that I don't think will last very long after this. When they say Not unionize, like what they meant, and this is a little bit of uh, a little bit of story that I, I learned recently. When they said unionize, they meant like seizing the means of destruction. Oh, oh that's so. Oh, that that never goes well when one. No, it's. It'll oh, be interesting no. to see how the higher ups in that particular guild handle the situation. Oh, that explains that rash of disappearances we saw mentioned. Well, if Waterdeep, and I've been here for only a week and so, if it's anything like Neverwinter, not everything has to be connected. It's a big enough city that there can be five different disasters going on at the same time and have absolutely nothing to do with each other. And there have yes. been. My ear, my ear has been to the ground, and there has been a recent outbreak of violence, specifically between the Xanathar and the Zentarum. These are, these are two criminal organizations that have been quietly at each other's throats for decades and since have become more... Well, some of them have even been using bakeries as their fronts, and even those bakeries have begun to, to send, to send uh, arsonists and graffiti artists at one another. It's been... Makes sense. Flour can be quite destructive when aerosolized. Very flammable. No offense to... There have been deaths in the streets. But what does this have to do with finding way to bring Clarion back? The Xanathar, the individual, the beholder, is known to be a collector and curator of certain very rare magical items. Dernan and his contacts tell me that at one time in the recent past, it was known that he came in to a staff that would be capable of giving our friend Clarion the choice to return to the material plane. A staff of resurrection. If Xanathar has such a thing, if we can somehow find a way to enter its domain, and steal it, or take it by force or deception, then we have a chance to bring Clarion back. But you say we need more help. Yes. If things go poorly, not only is Xanathar himself a wily and powerful foe, but his minions are also you know, his minions who serve him fanatically will also oppose us if we're discovered. This is not a uh, go in, smash everything, and grab what we want sort of situation. This is a be clever about it situation. Xanathar I'm, is... I'm better at being clever. Xanathar is paranoid and surrounds himself with his lackeys at any given time. There is one thing that we do know, and this is a piece of information that I was given a little while ago. And he 
sets aside, he pulls up a bag, and the bag... Echo just face in palm. <laughs> the bag, in, like, Helvetica font, says bag of carrying with a little with a little trademark above it. He opens it and he pulls out a sealed fish bowl and he sets it on the table and a little goldfish looks at you and goes blub blub. I've taken to calling him Chester. Is he food? He's the linchpin. I don't know that kind of food. <laughs> Why you bring fish? This. And he looks at Echo, as I keep saying, is Silgar. (laughs) Silgar is the one creature other than itself that Xanathar truly cares for. Silgar keeps the Xanathar from raining destruction upon the entire city. How did you end up getting the fish? Well, you see, this isn't actually Silgar. It's Chester. Silgar is in a fishbowl in the Xanathar's lair. But... There's always a but. The Xanathar... There are rumors that perhaps it has not been alive as long as we think it has, but... A beholder by the name of the Xanathar has been keeping the reins of the organization for many, many years. Do you know offhand what the life expectancy of your average goldfish is? I believe less than two, I believe less than five years, depending on how big the tank is. Do you know what the life expectancy is of a goldfish whose owner dotes upon it and feeds it far more often than it needs to be fed? I'm going to guess it dies. A very that it has died several times. Yes, and there is a specific individual whose task it is, every so often, to replace Silgar. With a new Silgar, I can't believe I'm even saying this out loud, in order to keep the head of the most powerful crime syndicate in Faerun sane. I see the rumors were true then. Yes. Calder will mutter something in Draconic under his breath. Is a string of curses. So your plan, if I am getting this correctly, is to be part of the fish uh, uh, replacement service? My plan. Do you think I give a shit about the mental state of a beholder? My plan is to utilize those who wish to replace the fish to give us information about how to get into the stronghold. That sounds more smart than what I was originally envisioning, yes. Very good. If if we do decide that we wish to preserve this equilibrium that this city has somehow managed to keep, and Moradin only knows how that's happened, then yes, we can replace the fish as part of our, as part of our mission. However... I see the Xanathar Guild as a net negative to the city of Waterdeep, so I am open to ideas when it comes to how to deal with them. And it. And either way, it would do us some good to have a bit more numbers on our side. I don't think Chester's going to pull his weight in a fight if it comes to it. No. Not unless he's something else. But we need someone that we can trust that isn't in the pocket of the Xanathar. We did consider bringing in a druid who could shift into a goldfish. But so far, no luck there. The Emerald Enclave does not want to have anything to do with this this particular mission. They think the entire thing is ridiculous, and frankly, I agree. I... I think I know someone who can help. Oh. And Echo has, like, picked up Chester's bowl at this point, is on his lap, and is, like, petting the bowl. <laughs> My, I have a brother that lives in Waterdeep. And as you say that, like, the moment you say that, 
you hear from outside, muffled because there's a door in the way, and you hear Dernan's voice go, Troll! Troll in the portal! And that, friends, <laughs> is where we are going to end our session today. <laughs> Going that's a fine that's a fine that is a fine end to the session.